Tech Yes City, the spirits of AliExpress summon you to review the Haswell 6 core 12 threaded Xeon across the 3.2 gigahertz old core for $20. Yeah, you right. must review this now. 6 cores, 12 threads, $20. Spirits of AliExpress, did you say there's a 6 core 12 threaded? X99 Xeon that clocks to 3.2 gigahertz for 20 bucks. That is correct. Well, then we better get up and review this thing. There's been a new wave going across the internet now, and it's got to do with X99 Xeons. And this uh, trick has been known for quite a while. And the reason why it never got popular is because the Xeon CPUs, the server grade V3s on 2011 socket, they were just too expensive. And also you had to couple it with an X99 motherboard that was also expensive. However, fast forward a few years and now on AliExpress, there's wide range support of budget motherboards that can support these Xeons and these Xeons are being dumped on the market and they become very cheap also. So you couple these two things together and you've got value for money, which is why these are getting so popular now. But what we've got right here in today's video is the 2620V3. This is a Xeon with six cores, 12 threads, as we said in the intro, and it also supports DDR4 ECC registered memory. Now, at this current point in time, DDR4 ECC registered, unlike DDR3 ECC registered memory, is not really viable for budget price performance. And the reason being is it's still in demand in data centers and the server environment to the point where it's actually more expensive than unbuffered DDR4. As opposed to DDR3 ECC registered, you can get that stuff super cheap, generally like everywhere over the internet, local deals, whatnot. Anyway, before we get into the results, this is related to an exploit in that once you take out a CPU microcode update, pertaining to these models right here, and that microcode update is the 6F2. Once you remove that, it now allows you to install a driver where you can set your own max turbo multiplier. However, the trick is, is that you have to have a BIOS that's able to be reflashed once you've taken out the microcode update. And then secondly, you have to have a Windows UEFI install and then you can't have a standard uh, legacy IDE install or an AHCI install because it just won't work. But those two things are easy to get by, especially with those X99 Chinese motherboards that are coming out for very cheap. And what I mean by that is I'll be doing a full roundup of which motherboards you should get. I'll also put links in the description for all this stuff I'm talking about here today because it's not just the six core, well, I'm actually holding the eight core here. There's also an eight core and a 12 core that are extremely relevant at the moment. These are the uh, 2640V3 and also the 2678V3, which has its own specialty, and that is it has a DDR3 memory controller on board. Though if you're looking for a full tutorial on how to get these Xeons unlocked, I'll be bringing that to the channel in about the next 24 hours, and I'll put the link up here once it's ready. And we'll also be taking a look at the eight core and the 12 core, so stay tuned for those, where I'll be doing different tests, because in today's video, Coupled with a $20 CPU, I decided to test with a 5700 XT and I decided to pit it against the Ryzen 5 3600 and also the i5 9400F. Two value for money six cores that are currently in the new market and are both very popular. I've also thrown in the 9900KS just for a reference to know what the max performance is with an RX 5700 XT. However, that aside, let's pull up the first benchmark here. We've got Strange Brigade, where lo and behold, there is virtually no difference between these uh, 1080p results here. So if we stepped it up to 1440p or even 4K, the differences would be even less. Now, another thing that I will mention is I had on the other three CPUs here, I had the RAM clocked to 3200 megahertz CL14. On this, I just decided to use the RAM out of the box at 1866 megahertz, because that's what these V3 Xeons uh, support, essentially. So it's pretty weird with some of the Chinese boards. We will talk about it a little bit later after we get these results out of the way. But next up, we've got everybody's favorite game, Escape from Tarkov. 
And what we saw here was when we maxed it to 120 FPS at high settings, 1080p. Now you guys are telling me, you're like, Brian, you gotta get back to testing those 1080p high settings. Cause I'm a high settings gamer and I gotta raise the question to you guys. Are you high settings gamers? Let us know in the settings below. <laughs> I mean, in the comments. Anyway, we got here for the results. 121 average FPS on the 9900KS. Even though the cap was 120, for some reason the 9900KS just decided it would just keep trying to break that limit. And then we had the 9400F got 120, Ryzen 5 3600 got 117, and also the uh, six core Z on here, the little $20 option, it did surprisingly well with a 98 average FPS and a 1% and 0.1% lows that weren't inherently bad. Now, if the 1% lows and 0.1% lows are pretty bad, I'll talk about them. But for what it's worth, we're seeing in the last two games here, they're absolutely fine too. So basically, for 20 bucks, you're getting smooth gaming. Let's move over now to Chaos Warhammer. And this saw, uh, basically with the 5700 XT, the results were screaming. So uh, we got over 280 FPS on all four configurations. So pretty much the GPU was holding this game back and the 1% and 0.1% lows were absolutely fine. Now moving over to F1 2019, if you want to become a race car driver, you can now do that for $20. So you're starting to see the theme here. <laughs> you got a 20 bro? So again, 1080p high settings gamer, we've got here 187 average FPS on the 2620V2. The other solutions all scored over 220 FPS, so they were doing a little bit better than our Xeon counterpart, just like Tarkov. Though it wasn't nothing to sweat about, and moving over to Fortnite, we saw here again, 1080p, those high settings, DX11, because DX12, I'm finding it's still a little bit buggy in this game. We saw over 200 FPS on all four solutions. Sure, we'll give the victory to the other three newer CPUs, but it wasn't by a huge amount. I'm guesstimating from about 15% more FPS, but in terms of price, yeah, you got it. 20 versus 150, what's the difference there? Last up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, everybody's favorite game for just pretty much loading it up and hitting the benchmark, and then uh, going and doing something else while you wait about 10 minutes for the benchmark to finish. In that case, we got here 140 average FPS, best case scenario on the 9900KS. And then we saw the 9400F, 129, and then 126 on the 3600, and then on the 6 core Z on 102. So it still did pretty well. This would be like the worst case scenario for the percentage differences here, where we saw the uh, Ryzen 5 3600 score about 25% more, and then the 9400F almost near the tune of 30%. And then we've bunched up the Cinebunch numbers, and what we see right here is that the uh, two six cores, the Ryzen 5 3600 does fare better than the 9400F, and also the 2620V3. And that's because it's got a better IPC, it's got, in the case of versus the Xeon, it's got higher clock speeds, as well as having also better power efficiency. So it is the better CPU in terms of these three six cores that I featured here today, where the 9400F doesn't have uh, hyper-threading. But that being said, they all still perform really well on this benchmark. I mean, the six core X99 Haswell managed to score over 2,100 points after this mod. Now, if you don't do this mod, the max you're gonna score is like into the 1600 region. Now you can see here that we're boosting performance on this Xeon by about 33% by doing this mod alone within itself. So that's how much performance you can unlock by doing this trick. Anyway, the last thing to talk about is the power consumption where all the three six cores did really well. When we loaded up Ida 64, we we're getting around 76 watts and that was on 100% load on this Xeon right here, as opposed to the 3600 and also the 9400F, they did score a bit lower, where the 9400F was actually the most efficient, if we're gonna look at it that way, in terms of its power versus FPS that it's putting out in the games. Though if we we'll look at the Cinebench numbers, the 3600 would then be more efficient. So there's different trade-offs there, but in terms of that six core Xeon, power consumption's really nothing to worry about considering how much money you're going to be saving. Those numbers, when we look at them, for what it's worth, we're seeing that this little guy here, when it clocks up to 3.2 gigahertz all cores, it can achieve that in games. And then you got 12 threads. So it's very relevant 
because of a few other things as well. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, these Xeons, man, you cover them in the past and they've got so many bad things going on. They don't have USB 3, they don't have NVMe M.2. M. <laughs> M. <laughs> and this is where the X99 Xeons do have all those answers covered. It's got those latest instruction sets like AVX2. It's also got VR support, USB 3 on board the motherboards, and M.2 NVMe. Even in the case like a cheap motherboard that we used here today, the machinist, it's coming in at like 69 bucks shipped in a national. Now there are two other motherboards that I'm looking at that look pretty good. The best one being the Wannan, which even includes like an integrated IO, better VRM. It's got dual fans on the heat sinks. It also supports DDR3. So we will be doing a motherboard roundup here on the channel, but my two favorite motherboards coming into this are the one and uh, Z and also the machinist boards as there is another one called the Atomiter, but that has gone up in price since. But I will be doing a roundup, so stay tuned for that. But basically what we're getting here is a budget CPU for 20 bucks. We've got motherboards that are cheap and then we can couple that with cheap DDR4 memory because we can get the lower clock stuff and put it in quad channel. And now the advantages of quad channel is basically you're getting double the bandwidth versus dual channel. So you can see here that there's so many things going for this. And when we look at the other option, which we're gonna be taking a look at later in the month, the 2678, that supports DDR3 ECC registered. So you can get 1600 megahertz and also 16 gigabyte sticks for really cheap. And then you've got yourself a 12 core, 24 thread budget workstation with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So it's making really good strides, really good possibility. And when it comes down to it, we've just got a whole new meta that is going to break the internet in the enthusiast tech scene in 2020 because of its value for money and because it does have those counter arguments against the people who say, don't buy the old used stuff because it's outdated. Now the last argument, there's gonna be a counter argument for these Xeons and I know that. And that's gonna be, there's no upgrade path. And when you look at it, there is actually because you've got now 18 cores, 36 thread Xeons that go up to 3.6 gigahertz all cores and they are a little bit too expensive at the moment but there's your upgrade path in the future when they come down in price you're going to be able to upgrade to that as well. So basically the X99 Xeons they are now the new or should I say used kids on the block and they're coming to make some price performance raw in 2020. And this basically is making put a smile on my face because I was sad when AMD took away the Ryzen 5 3500X off AliExpress, I was sad. But with this coming along here, I guess it's just karma because now people have a uh, double the cores and quadruple the threads option for the same money. So if that's what AMD want people to go do, they want people to go spend their money on a used Xeon rather than go to their own company, then so be it. And so you may wonder why the desktop enthusiast market has declining sales. It's probably because of these guys right here, but at the same time, it raises the argument of if there was proper innovation, if there was every year we got ridiculously good gains year on year, both in the GPU and the CPU segment, there'd be no reason for this. This wouldn't exist, but it does. And it's popular and it's going to be breaking 2020 because of the arguments we mentioned in this video. Though, if you guys have questions and comments about today's video, then be sure to drop them in the comments section below. I'll answer them as best as I can. If there's too many questions, then I'll put together a whole Q&A regarding this right here. And with that aside, we do have the question of the day too, which comes from MBG underscore Angel Mitt. And they said, I'm on a budget of like $450. Is this really worth it? And they're referring to the A320 motherboard plus the Ryzen 5 3600 that we did a video on. I'll put the link up here. But basically, all these CPUs, except the 9900KS, right? The 9400F, the Ryzen 5 3600, also the 2600. And now this uh, 2620V3, uh, these CPUs, they have a purpose. They're really good value for money. If you go out and buy any of these CPUs, you're gonna be getting a good experience. My advice is not to sweat too much about it because they're all good options. If you buy any four of those CPUs that I just said, then you're going to be having a smooth and good game experience. In the case of the Xeons, this is a great option being shipped worldwide to people that can't get access 
too good prices on Ryzen and also new i5s. And so it just alleviates a problem of people who also wanna might try tinkering as well or building uh, computers for friends and family and they're on a strict budget. So that's what all this stuff is doing. And yes, I can recommend, of course, to answer the question directly, the Ryzen 5 3600 on an A320. I've used it numerous times and it does a great job. Never heard any complaints as well to the people who have been using it. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And also I do apologize before I get on out of here. I know there's a few comments coming in, like when are you gonna get the input latency testing done? on Ryzen CPUs. I just got a 240 Hertz monitor in, so stay tuned for those results. They will be coming. Also the 9900T, that'll get a dedicated video too. And also the 12 core and eight core Xeons will be getting dedicated videos too. So there's a lot coming in the month of February. Just understand that I am a one man band around here at Tech Yes City, so I can't just snap my fingers and a video is done. Well, maybe I can now that I've got a $20 Xeon. Peace out for now, bye. Dollar Shave Club. <laughs>